On today's episode of Gathering the Kings. People ask, who's your competition? And I'm like, we don't have any, you know? Yeah. Well, what about, I'm like, well, that's, they're not really competition. Yeah, they're in the business. We're in the same business, but I'm not competing against anybody other than ourselves, you know? You are listening to Gathering the Kings with Chaz Wolf, featuring fellow seven, eight, and even nine figure business owners who have real battle scars from business and life, but have prevailed as the king that they are designed to be. We welcome high-performing entrepreneurs to the stage in order to reveal the real of the real on what it takes to build a successful business today. We dissect the good and bad decisions they've made along the way that give a true and accurate picture of the journey of success and how you too can get there. Through this dialogue, you will learn the value of growing your network and surrounding yourself with power players and kings like today's guest. Grab your pen and notebook because we're about to dive in. What's up, everybody? Chaz Wolf, Gathering the Kings podcast. Today, I got Jeremy Briggs here on the King stage. Jeremy, welcome, my brother. How are you? Thank you. I'm wonderful. How are you? Dude, I'm feeling fresh. We were just talking about it being a Tuesday, but sometimes Tuesdays are a reiteration of Monday. (laughs) We both kind of chuckled at that one, but... I'm glad that you're here, man. I'm glad to dive into the story. We were ref- I was referred to you by, by another guy that was on the pod. I don't get to do this very often. And so we get another layer of uh, friendship. We have a mutual friend now. And Frank, 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 a home builder, good customer of mine, good friend of mine. Good, man. good stuff, man. Well, Jeremy, tell us what kind of business that you have, brother. Well, I own a ready mix concrete business. And what that is for people that get confused is we're the guys that produce the concrete and deliver it in the trucks, the big mixer trucks. We take it to the job sites and we dump it out. I get a lot of calls all the time. You know, hey, I need a patio at my house. I'm like, we don't do the labor. We produce concrete and we deliver it to you. You have somebody else on the ground and do what you want. Now, I'm sure at this point you have, because of those phone calls, I'm sure you got a long list of referral partners. Yes. Yes. And, and hopefully you're getting a little cut, uh, but you know, neither here nor there, whether you do or not. Uh, but I know I would be, um, you know, trying to uh, refer business and, and bring, uh, bring some good folks to people's homes. I don't, don't ever accept, you know, referral fees, what have you, or so, whatever people want to yeah. call. Yeah. Just for the simple fact that I want everybody to be successful. It's good. And, and put as much money in their pocket as they can. Yeah focus on my business. And if I do my business, right, then I get my share off of it. And I love so I don't need a piece of the pot from everybody. Yeah, no, I love that. I guess there's, there's two angles. I've got a good buddy of mine that's in the GPO space, the group purchasing space. And so everything for him is a contract and a relationship. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, I'm going to refer you to these contracts. You get discounts or you get great service. And, and basically it's his job just to refer and, and connect. And that's how he does his business. And so I love the other way around though, too, is you kind of just, they're doing the right thing and the right thing always comes back. That's really relationships though, really, right? Absolutely. hundred percent. Do the right thing. We were, we were just talking about before I hit the record button, even you said that you had done some podcasting with Brandon, and obviously we were talking about this podcast and some of the relationships that have come from this podcast where I don't ask anything. Obviously we're just giving back to the listener here today. And it's like, man, some of the, some of the coolest relationships have come from just doing the right thing. So having, having great conversation. Absolutely. Well, I want to, before we get into your story, I want to know obviously how you guys started and a little bit of your entrepreneurial journey. Before we get into that, my first question is always the same. Why? What's your ticker? What's making you move? What makes you wake up every single day? You've obviously been successful. You could probably, you know, take some time off or not push as hard, but you still push hard. And I want to know why. Because I enjoy things. I enjoy playing. I'm a I'm a firm believer there's two kinds of people born in this world. Okay. And there are people that live to work. Okay. People that work to live. There you go. I'm not a live to work kind of guy. I work to live. I want to play. I want to have fun. I want to have toys. Yeah. I want to enjoy life. I want to give to my friends and my family and my kids. Love that. So I'm a, I feel like I'm a fun guy. You know, I'm always smiling the party kind of guy yeah that's what drives me is like you know that's a that's a cool convertible car there i gotta work hard i want one of them (laughs) you know it's a cool ski boat i enjoy going to the lake and playing on the water and and things like and 
Yeah. You can't be broke and sit at the house and, and have those things. That's right. You know, you can't. And so is it, and this is a little bit of a parlay for you here, just to kind of give us a, maybe a deeper, deeper thought. The, the toys I hear as the like physical representation of joy, right? Like when you yes. said, I'm, I'm always smiling, like before you even said that, you know, for the listeners that are on, on Spotify or Apple, they don't get to see you, but my cheeks are already sore because I've been trying to keep up with your smiling. <laughs> but in all seriousness, I find it, I find the conversation already been super joyful. And then your first answer is toys, which really equates to joy. And so my question in all that is where, what's the joy? How, like, why are you so joyful or why are you seeking joy in that way or toys and, you know, the manifestation of all that? Like, why is that so important to you? I don't know. It's just fun. I mean, who doesn't like to go out and have fun and smile and laugh and, yeah. and enjoy things every day? What's the, what's the caveat? Taking it seriously and being stressed? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I don't have a lot of stress in life. I never, have. well, I say I never have. I have. The older I get, you know, the more I realize, hey, man, we're here for a very short period of time on this earth. And I want to spend every second that I've got enjoying it. Nobody knows for sure what happens when we're gone. You know, and I, I pray and hope that there is a, a great heaven that we go to and, and get to li live even a better life. But we just don't know, you know, we just don't know. As much as I want to believe and have faith, we don't have that tangible evidence that says, no, this, this is where you're going. You're going to heaven or you're going to hell. So right. while I'm here and things can change in a heartbeat, you know, people get hit by trucks all the time and plane crashes and lightning strikes and snake bites and things like that. And it can come to an end real quick. So I just, you know, I enjoy it. I like to have fun and make memories. So, yeah. Yeah. The make memories part, you know, I think we all like to have fun, but for the, for the serious guys out there that are like me, that kind of like not shy away from fun, but think, well, I'll just, I'll get to the fun later. You know, he's right. He's right. But even in your task oriented thoughts, position it like this position one of your boxes of things that you have to get done to create memories at least in your task oriented i got to be busy all the time mindset like i i used to be and still am a lot of times if i just create a box on my to-do list of create memories that part right there then helps me get into that mindset of right here stop thinking five and ten and 25 years down the line think today mm -hmm. how what am i doing with my kids today what am I enjoying with my wife today? What am I, what am I enjoying today? You know, I think all that's a, just a beautiful place to be. In fact, it actually reminds me of my, my, my dad tells a story. I didn't know my dad growing up. We met when I was 24. He didn't know I existed. I thought somebody else was my dad, kind of a crazy story, but he talks about how his wife bought him his first elk hunting tag 30, you know, two years ago or whatever it was now. And her response was to him because he, he wanted to go, he wanted to go, he wanted to go, but wouldn't spend the money, didn't, want to, didn't think he'd take off the time from work. And she was like, life's too short. Here you go. And he jokes now that she doesn't realize what can of worms that she opened uh, because we're all elk, alcoholics, as we say now. But I'm, uh, big, I'm a big alcoholic. Dude, so you I'm get it. with it. You get it. So the, but the reality is still the same of like, hey, look, let's take advantage of the moment. Let's let's. Let's go spend a week or two in the, in the woods. Work will be here when we get back. Yeah. Okay. I love the mindset. Okay. Um, is your family like this? Was your, was your dad like this? Like what, what gave you this perspective? You know, my dad, my father, he was, he's passed away. He passed away five years ago, but he was in the oil and gas business and also an accountant. Okay. And so he, he worked not. all the time. Yeah. All the time. So all he ever did was work and he traveled and worked and worked. And I, I remember, you know, always, you know, where's dad? He's, he's on a business trip. He's on a business trip, you know, or you come home and you got your buddies and you're running through the house and you're being loud. And, you know, it's like, get outside. Dad's working. I'm like, dang, dad, if all you ever do is work, you know? And so I, I never had the privilege or to go hunting with my father and, there was a few times when we were younger, we lived out on a lake and, and he bought a boat and was taking us and we were setting up a trot lines. 
And so every morning before school, me and my, my brother, one of my brothers, or six of us, but one of my brothers, we'd go check that trot line with my dad every morning. Wow. Well, he got tired of, of getting up and, and going. So finally he taught us how to drive a boat, you know, like <laughs> second, third grade. Whoa. You know, and like next trot line, get your butt back here, you know, get ready for school. And so those were some of my fondest memories of my father was just those short little 20 minute trips out onto the lake, check the trot line and then tear back yeah. in. And we didn't get to do that a whole lot. You know? And and so yeah, growing up, you know, when I started having a family and children and stuff, I was like, you know, I want to be able to give as much as I can to my children and let them see that there's so much fun in life. And I mean, life is fun. It, it is. is. There's so much you can do every day. To, even if you're working, I have fun working. Yeah. To, to have fun. And, and so... I don't know. I've never been a guy that sits around and goes, oh, pity me. I got to go to work today. I'm like, hey, I'm going to go to work. And then when I get off, I'm going fishing or right. I'm going to a ranger game or whatever it, you know, it might be. Or I'm going to come home. I'm going to lay on my bed and watch TV and be lazy. But I'm going to make my choice for the day and I'm going to enjoy it. Yeah. I, I, the, the confidence that you have, even in the peace. And a lot of times people, they're not, they're not certain in, their, in, the, in the ability to have the peace. It's the confidence of going and charging the hill or starting a new business or getting a new client or whatever. But it's like, that's that same confidence that I hear you saying like, no, no, I'm confident in just being confident yeah. in having fun, confident in, in providing for your family, something that you didn't really get a whole lot, which I think is a huge motivator for a lot of us, yeah. which is pretty cool. Okay. So let's get into your story. I want to know is the ready mix concrete business. Was that the first endeavor? Was there something before that? Give us a little bit of your entrepreneurial journey here. Oh, so my entrepreneurial journey. I guess it started. Well, can can I? Do we have time for me to kind of start from the beginning? So I know? want I want you to start from the beginning, but but we've only got three hours here on this podcast. So, <laughs> well, I, I won't dig too deep into it. But as a young man, I'm 45 now. As a young man, I had that. I want to party. I want to play. I want to enjoy. Uh, yada yada. Yeah. Well, that got me in trouble. Because I wasn't making proper decisions, right? Uh, good life choices on how I wanted to handle those things. Sure. I got myself in trouble. Not many people know this about me, just my close friends and people I grew up with. And so it's not something I just run around and talk about. I'm, I'm prepared to, but I got in trouble. And at 18 years old, I spent a year in prison. Wow. Which was a complete and absolute eye opener. Yeah. I was in there for 13 months, and the day I walked out, I said, I will never, ever go back. I'm changing my life. Right now, I'm going to be a good man. I'm going to be a good, productive citizen in our community. I'm going to get back. I'm going to do everything I can to live a good life. To whenever it's gone, nobody can ever say, hey, that guy did it wrong. Yeah. And so that's what I've done. I've coached Little League Baseball for, for 10 years. My nephews, my son friends, kids. I'm actually about to get into it with my nephew. So, you know, I gave back that way. I've, I've done a lot of things, you know, along the ways. And when I started doing those things, it was amazing how doors started opening up. And a good friend of mine, mentor, what I would call him, I didn't know him very well, but I'd taken a job. I was 20 years old. I'd taken a job, car dealership, selling cars. And I walked in there and I was salesman of the month, the very first six months I was there. Wow. And I sold a car one day to an old gentleman and we made a lot of money off of it. And he walked out and the managers were high-fiving me and they're like, oh yeah, we hit a home run. And I walked into my little cubicle and I packed my things and I walked back out and I said, I'm done. Like, what are you talking about? You know, yeah. what? you just, you just made, you know, three grand on commission off this car. And I was like, right. because I screwed that old man over. Wow. Hated it. And it, yeah. I mean, it, it stuck with me and it bothered me. So I walked out, I was done. Wow. Well, I took a job as a project manager for a company doing concrete, building O'Reilly's. Okay. In auto zones all across the, the U S doing the concrete on them. 
it was a friend of mine. It was his business and he needed somebody because he was tired of traveling. He needed somebody that go out there and run his cruise. Really Science. somebody that could speak English basically is what it broke down to and could communicate. You know, I didn't know what I was doing, but he just yeah. needed somebody feet on the ground. So I took that and I was doing that for several years. Well, about two years. Well, then my wife got pregnant and she was about to have babies. Well, you know, I was praying, you know, I got to get out of this. I got to come home. I can't can't be traveling and have twin daughters. Right. Right. Um, and yeah. I came home the day that, you know, like two days before she was supposed to have the, our daughters. And I get a phone call from a guy says, Hey, I want you, I want to me meet with you for lunch. And this is where I met my mentor, Ken. And he owned a pool store building gunnot swimming pools. Yeah. And he's like, I need a sales guy. I laughed at him. I said, I don't know anything about swimming pools. And he <laughs> said, he said, I'll teach you everything you need to know. Yeah. Well, so we went and had lunch and he made me an offer. And, and I was like, and that's, yeah, I can't make a living off of it. And so I counter offered. I said, how about, oh, you pay me this and I'll, I will sell this many pools. And he kind of laughed at me. And he said, man, the most pools I've ever sold in a year. And he goes, I've been busting my tail. And this for 10 years is 25 pools. I said, well, if I sell a hundred pools, what will that pay me? And so he threw me a number out there and I thought, man, I'll be rich in a year. I'm going <laughs> to. And so he, he made me a promise. I'm going to pay you this much if, if, and it was like, you know, 120 grand in bonuses. Right. With salary and bonuses, which yeah. 25 years ago, that was a lot of money. And for your stage in life, I had to have twins, try not to travel. Yeah. Oh, my, oh my God. Oh my you know? God. And so then I hit the grind. I mean, it was, it was on. In yeah. the very first meeting I went to, sales meeting, or to, to sell a pool, I sold it. I sold it. And then I was like, that was easy. And it continued on. Well, we ended up selling 115 pools my very first year. Wow. Oh, and so he's just floored. He's like, oh, and so we expanded, had to hire more people, you know, increase a the lot more people <laughs> business. And we yeah. did that for 10 years, for 10 years and three years into it, I sold my first million dollar deal Wow! and got a 3% commission on that. So 30 grand commission on that. And, and that's, that's really where I said, this is, I want more money. I want more money. So I realized, you know, I was having fun. I got to travel, you know, I get, I got that commission and I audit, I put it for my vacation and I went and took a two week round trip around Northern U S with a buddy of mine, camping out and driving around Yellowstone. Yeah. We did that. Well, then it came back and I was broke. <laughs> I got to make more money. <laughs> That's where I started, you know, really wanting that hunger and, and wanting things and, and, yeah. and providing. So we did that for 10 years. Well, we got to the point to where he was ready to, to retire from building pools and stuff like that. And so he was selling out. Well, the company that did the gun out for us, sprayed the gun out, which is the concrete in the swimming pools, yep. called and asked Ken Lee and said, hey, you know, how about you sell that pool store and you come run our gun out crew? And, and, and he said, well, I'll do it, but I'm bringing Jeremy with me. We're like, well, we don't really have a spot, but we'll find something for him. Sure. So they brought me in and I took a pay cut. I was depressed. It's like, man, that's not what I wanted. So I went to the owner. I said, what do I got to do to make money? And he's like, well, how much are you looking to make? I said, I want to make 250 grand a year. And he kind of laughed at me and he was, well, we're a long ways from that. I said, well, what has to happen? Right. And so he said, well, tell me, no, tell me, tell me the recipe. Yeah. Uh, what do we have to do? I mean, there's money to be made. How do I get? into your pocket to make that. Yeah. He said, well, we'd have to start X amount of yards every month. And then I'll put you on a bonus schedule that if you can reach these milestones, it's feasible for you to reach that throughout the year. And yeah. I said, deal. So I, I was like, well, put me in that spot. So he put me in. So I started learning dispatch, you know, taking orders over the phone and scheduling and all that. So I started asking him, you know, what's your record? daily record what's your monthly record what's your yearly record and i'm going to break that i was like i'm going to break one every week every month whatever i got to do and it and i started doing that well i ruffled a lot of feathers guys that have been in the business for a long time I'm like who's this kid he don't know 
Jack about this. Who's he coming in here, changing our schedule and how we do things? Right. Well, two months into it, he cleaned house. He fired everybody. He was like, you are now my new plant manager. Yeah. I don't know what you've done, but everything's changed around here. And we started setting records. So we went and started. It was his company. He had nine trucks, old beat up mixer trucks. When I left, he had five locations and over a hundred trucks, a quarry, a rock quarry, and a hundred haul trucks. And then he, he sold it out about four years ago for, for well over a hundred million. Wow. And I was just like, I can do that. Well, I don't have to keep making people that kind of money. Yeah. And so another friend of mine, we got to talking one day and he was like, man, let's open our own. I'm like you want to? And he said, yeah, let's do it. So hands everything up and, and the journey began Bought a piece of property yeah. and ordered a plant and ordered nine trucks. And wow, I was two and a half years ago and now we're at 32 trucks. I got 25 more ordered. We're building our second location right now. We're A, probably 35 to $40 million a year right now. Yeah. Which I anticipate to increase. Of course. Yeah. I mean, your, your history is all about increasing. I, I just love, I love, I love talking with the guy that has sales history because guys like you and I, we can look back into our own, not, it sounds crazy to like to, to our own ability, but it, that's exactly what it is. Like you have a skill set you can take anywhere. And you can grow your own business or you can grow someone else's business or whatever. If, if, if those guys had been really smart, they would have tried to work you into, you know, a higher position and, and, and keep you. But the reality is still the same is that you have this skill set of people, growth. There's a certain mindset that comes along with this. Obviously, there's, there's a, like a practical skill that comes with sales. But you're, you're, you're always going to be focused on growth. Always. You also have the ability to, when you hire somebody or when you talk to another business owner, remove all excuses. Like there is no, like you want more business, you just go get it, right? It's like the, no, no, don't tell me it's not possible. Don't tell me I can't make whatever type of money here. It's okay. Well, in order to do that, here's the recipe. And, and to that person at that time, that sounded crazy. But to you, you're just like, I don't really care what it is. Just tell me what I got to do. I'll go, I'll go figure it out. Exactly how it was. And like, you know, I got laughed at. Like, go. Okay. Sure. You yeah, know. Pro prove me wrong, right? And he threw a formula out there. Like, you can get there with this formula. Thinking that you'd never do it. Never. He, he was like, it'll never happen, but here you go. If you want to make it happen, this is what you got to do. And so, you know, I put a lot of long hours in. I was like, it's going to happen. You're going to pay me that. Okay, we'll see. You know? Exactly. Hey, kings and queens, Chaz Wolf. I want to talk to you about something that's super important to me. We put a lot of time and effort, we meaning myself and my team, into this podcast, into the content that goes out every single day. And if you have been getting any sort of value or insight from this, we want it to be able to reach other business owners too. So we would love if you would like, comment, share, leave a review, post, share again, <laughs> all of the things on social media, on all the different platforms or even on the podcast mediums of Apple and Spotify. We would love to be able to get our content into more hands, more entrepreneurs, so they can grow their business as quick as possible. Together, we are building a community of like-minded entrepreneurs who are committed to growing their businesses to new heights. So let's do this. Let's help each other. Let's help each other grow. Awesome. What would you say to the guy listening right now? You know, he, you know, here you are talking about millions and millions and millions and millions, and he, he hasn't hit the first million yet. And, and he's, you know, a little bit lost, right? He's got a lot going on in his business, wearing too many hats, doing too many things. He's confused. He's, he's listening today to just pick up a nugget. Based on what you've told me so far, what do you tell that guy when you just like, you could breathe a million, it sounds like. Well, first off, the wearing too many hats. People do that all the time. And I used to do that when I was younger. Like, I can do it all. I want to do it all. Let me have it. I'll take care of it. Well, you get to where you're not very good at any of it. Yeah. So you got to, you got to surround yourself with like-minded people want to work that want to make as much money as they possibly can. And you've got to be able to turn it over to them. You've got to be able to trust them. When I hire people and I, and I try to move them into, you know, manageable positions and stuff like that, 
a lot of conversations with them. I want people that are going to treat my business like I treated other business, like I own it. Yep. I want them to feel like they own the business. This is your business. You make, I want you to make decisions that you feel is best for the company. And if you make a wrong decision, we'll sit down, we'll talk about it and we'll fix it. And then when you make a right decision, we're going to high five and you're going to get rewarded for it. And, and we're going to continue on. And, and then, so that I try to surround myself with those kind of guys. And then I do that, but then they want to try to wear the, all the hats. And then I always have to sit them down and say, Hey, look, man, this is why we have this other guy. This is why we have this guy. Let them do their job. Right. Let them do their job. If they fail, they won't fail again. You know, they'll learn from it. And if they can't learn from it, then we'll find somebody that can. And it, it seems to work really, really well for me that way, you know, and to, to find guys that will buy into that. hundred percent. You, the, I love how you have the perspective. And I think for the guy listening right now or the gal, the, the difference is, is that potentially when they worked for somebody, they weren't that guy. Mm -hmm. Right. And so they don't, maybe they have a limiting belief that those guys don't exist or that those guys aren't going to come in and work for them because they themselves weren't a go-getter for somebody else. But the reality of it is that there are plenty of people out there who want an opportunity, who, who do take ownership seriously. And maybe they don't own the company, but they're owning their position. They're owning their own destiny, which is like, gosh, you've got a salesperson like that. Give them the recipe. They'll go figure it out. Yeah. I try to preach them guys. Hey, if you do your job well here and, and we close the doors down tomorrow, you're going to be valued anywhere you want to. So don't look at it as this is your last stop, your only stop. You've got options in life. Hopefully, we put you in a position that you don't ever look at those options. But I want you to learn well enough that you can go anywhere in the industry and be successful. Yeah. And so a lot of people, they're scared to, to let things go or to teach people. Now, oh, well, he's going to take my job. Well, if you're doing your job properly, they're not. All they're going to do is make you make you a better person and your company a better place. Yeah, so 100%. We, we work real hard on that, on finding those right people and, and having those conversations with them before they're ever promoted. And we, we like to promote from within. You know, I've taken several just CDL ready mix driver guys that they're content with just driving a pickup truck because they think, or a, you know, a big, a big rig, because right. they think that that's what their worth is and that's all they're ever going to be, yeah. you know, and for whatever reason, because that's what they've been told or, you know, they've always been passed up for promotions at other places. And that's not us. You know, we want to promote. We, I want to take that guy that nobody's ever given a chance and say, hey, you're this guy for that job, yeah. you know. And then it's amazing how quick people, Come alive and, and yes, and they're and and they they buy and they're they're a part of the team. And they're like, oh my god, you know, thank you for giving me that opportunity. Nobody in the world was ever going to give me. And they and you breathe belief, yeah. Especially when nobody else has, right? They themselves probably mm -hmm. haven't, you know, at least in a little while. So good. Okay, so if let's let's say, you know, if that's if that's the good thing that you've done is is you know. Find good people, promote good people. Give us a give us a, a specific there, and then we'll move to maybe a bad choice. But this seems to be like a pretty pretty thick vein here for you as far as how, why you've been successful. So, think into your rolodex of experiences. Tell us about a situation where you picked this guy out, or he was the right person. You know, where you hired well. In essence, is kind of like the topic that we're talking about. Love to hear uh, maybe a specific situation. So, I'll, I'll put it right there. My operations manager. He he's. My right hand man, you know, he, he oversees pretty much our day to day, our schedule and our drivers, you know, he wears a lot of hats. I always tell him, Hey, somebody else take care of that. Let somebody else. He's one of those. I have to work on him all the time. Right. But he was the company that I, I came from that uh, he was a dispatcher. Yeah. Well, he, he, he came in hired as a driver at the time. And I, I just seen something in him. I'm like, hey, this guy, he, he needs to be more in a driver. So I brought him in. I taught him how to dispatch. Well, then he got himself into a position to where the company that we were at wouldn't promote him because he was so good at that job. Interesting. And they were scared to move him up. You to know? lose him. Yeah. 
if we, if we move him up, then who's going to fill that void? Right. Well, so he was stuck there at that job. And when we opened up after about a year, I called him up, I had a non-compete with that other company. And so yeah. a large lawsuit, things like that, but that's another story. <laughs> I couldn't call him when we first opened. Right. But whenever I finally called him, I'm like, Hey, let's, um, and so he came and, and visited and, and I was like, I want to give you the opportunity to come in and, and do what I know you're capable of doing. You know, you're, you're more than just somebody needs to sit and start and answer the phone and, and write a schedule down. Right. And so I give him that opportunity and he's turned out to be, you know, one of the best in the business in our Metroplex because he was given that opportunity. And I mean, I'm proud of the guy and, you know, he's young, he, he's young and, and grew up in the oil field. So he still has that mentality that sometimes you got to be mean to people and stuff like that. And right. always have to break it down. Like, dude, you don't have to, you don't have to yell at anybody. It's gotta be, it's gotta have fun. You ain't gotta yell at anybody, get, get what you need done. It gets better every day, which, you yeah. know, makes me proud to see that, to see a change, somebody evolve and change. Yeah. But yeah, that's, that's probably the, the best business decision I, I've ever made, you know, as far as employee. Yeah. I love that. I love the, the detail of it. Uh, it's you being a good leader, seeing the potential in people. I'm sure he's extremely appreciative of that. But then also as you continue to lead him, he's going to continue to get better, make himself more valuable. I, I think that reflects to you as a good leader. And I think anybody listening would say the same. Let's flip the coin. I got something real quick. Yeah, please, please. So um, listeners, they're going to be going, well, you, know, you got to find those people first and stuff like that. You really don't. They're there. Everybody wants that higher position or wants that opportunity. Well, not everybody, but just about everybody. They just need that, the right coaching and the right opportunity. Yeah. If you give somebody the right opportunity, most of the time they're going to run with it and they're going to do good. If you take care of them and explain things to them. Oh, but then and every now and then you'll get that guy that has always made it just you know, you feel like he's the right guy, but he's really not. Really not. That's right. But they're out there. I mean, I've taken guys, you know, that work for me now that, like I said, nobody in the world would ever gave them a, a chance whatsoever, right. you know, whether it be their appearance, you know, and that's a sad part about it. It is, you know, people get judged on how they look, how much they weigh, how many teeth they got. Right. I personally... I don't care about all that. I want somebody that's going to be honest and somebody that's going to work hard and, and put their heart into it. I'll take right. that every day over a Brad Pitt. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I 100% agree. And and so for the for the owner listening, it's not just about you know the fact that they are out there. Yes. The reality is, is that when you get a glimpse of the right person, whether you thought that they were going to be or whether you groomed them up to be the right person, now that you know what it feels like to have that guy that you're describing on your team, you wouldn't go back. Like you've seen the light mm -hmm. of having a, a wingman, as you said, you know, your right hand guy. And so it's like, you know, for the guy who's listening, who maybe doesn't run a $40 million business. Okay, fine. You still need that key role who can take certain things away. And when, when they do, then it frees you up to do other things. Well, mm -hmm. like you were talking about and not wearing too many hats. It, that right there, that mindset's a game changer, just like you were just describing, but on a much bigger scale is like those people exist. And even if this person doesn't work out long term for the next 20 years, okay, fine. He's with me two years or five years or whatever. I'm going to find somebody else. I'm, I now have confidence to know, like you're saying, that they exist. And the, yeah, exactly. And then the, the effect of, the, of, of having them on your team changes everything because it allows you to actually go operate and grow. Mm -hmm. So, Absolutely. all right, well, let's flip the coin. Tell right. me about a bad choice, a decision that you like, oh, it did not turn out how I, how I thought it was going to. So when we were first opening up, I needed somebody, I needed a plant manager. You know? um, I needed to focus on sales, right? I needed to focus on growing the business. I, I, I didn't need to be in the office waiting for somebody to call and schedule something and me to load a truck and send it off. I needed to be out beating the streets and. And talking to people saying, hey, give us a chance, you know. Yeah. We're new in town, you know. Right. They knew me, but people are real finicky in the in our market. They don't like change. Like, no, huh. stay with this company here. They've taken care of me. 
if I come forward with you and they find out, maybe they don't pull for me again. Right. Things like that. And so it, it was a hard struggle. Well, we, we found a guy that had been in the business and, and people said, but we knew he was very knowledgeable. We knew he was knowledgeable and he was like, we need somebody knowledgeable, somebody, we don't have time to train somebody. Right, right. We were, we were forewarned that uh, he ain't, you don't want him, you know? Yeah, he knows the business very well, but he's not a very personal right. and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, we, we hired him anyway against our better judgment, you know? Oh, well, we can, we can change him. We can change. Yeah. And, and no, no. It was, it's a disaster. You can't change you can't change a lot of people. You can change some people, you know, for the better, but the ones that are people, willing. When people are set in bad habits and bad ways, it's it's hard to break them out of. Yeah, and that's so what they don't want to be. That was that's how Cal came along. That's when I went and I was like, I've got the right guy, you know, and went and got him. Yeah, and so through the process of of you telling that story, I picked out a couple of things. Tell me if I'm if I'm if I'm if I'm off on this, but. Sometimes as business owners, even though we know better, we have to kind of pick the lesser of two evils. And in that moment, the lesser of two evils was picking maybe the wrong guy mm -hmm. because it allowed you to, even though it was maybe frustrating for a period of time to go focus on sales. He was a stop guy. Yep, exactly. That's a great way to say it. Knowing that like, ah, oh, it caused some problems. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the problems were maybe worth it so that you could go focus on, on growing the business. So talk, talk to that a little bit. They were, and when you look back at it at the end of the day, it was still the right decision. He, sure. he wasn't yep. the right guy for the long term, but he was a short term fix. He was somebody that we needed because, like I said, he understood the business. He was able to come right in. He was a plug and play, is what exactly. he was. But his batteries ran out bigger than we thought they would. <laughs> That's a good way to say it. Thank good way to say it. What, what do you have now, Jeremy, around like a decision making process? Since we've talked a lot about hiring, Maybe talk about that, or maybe just j decisions that come across your desk in general. Do you, a certain step, certain mindset that you take, certain process? You know, it's funny. We we have we talk about that. You know, the bigger corporations that we compete with around here, we're just bullying them around. Really, is what I like to say. Is you know, people ask who's your competition, and I'm like, we don't have any. You know? Yeah. Well, we're like, well, that's they're not really competition. Yeah, they're in the business. We're in the same business. I'm not competing against anybody other than ourselves, you know, yeah. they got to be better than us, which is hard to do. And the reason why is because big corporations say your loader goes down, have a big, you know, front end loader to haul your material into your plant and stuff like that. You know, well, we got to have a meeting or we fix this or is it time to buy a new one? Well, let's buy a new one. Okay. Well, then they got a three week wait on a board meeting. People go to vote. It's got to go through this process process right well or as us you know we're family owned and operated Me and my partner hey our loader's broke what's it going to cost to fix it we can buy another one for this and you know, cost a little bit okay let's just buy a new one you know and that's about a three minute conversation right and so we can stay ahead of the game all the time you know you get price increases and, and it's real easy you can just look at your numbers and say well this is where we've where we want our margins to be. So this is how far we got to go up. The bigger company they have meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting to make things happen. Uh, and so we kind of cowboy things around here. You know, we're just good old country boys out here and that's right. things the right way and how we feel and it works. You know, it works. It works well for us. Yeah, it's the it's the you know it's your it's your first mover's advantage, right? It's you, it's yeah. your it's your small enough to still be nimble, which is funny because obviously. You know, there's obviously much smaller fish in the pond than you, but it's like when you realize the nature of the game, it really doesn't matter your actual size to you. Yeah. It's the mindset of cowboy. I'm not like actually just slinging out here, but there is an there is a there's a freeness or maybe a, a not set in concrete pun intended for a process. Like, okay, we have a process, but like, dude, we can do we can do this way faster than the next guy. So let's change it up. Let's switch it up. Let's be nimble. Let's be fast. Speed is your friend, is what I'm hearing. It works well for us in our business. Our business is changing all the time. You know, we we live off the economy. We we are not. We are at somewhat a necessity, but you don't have to have concrete to survive. That's right. That's right. 
Well, I can think of some other things I would want first. So we need the economy to stay strong and things like, but it just makes it easy to be able to sit down and visit about it for a few minutes and go, well, that makes sense for us. Well, then let's do it. Yeah, hundred percent. Okay, let's go to the speed round here. First question of the speed round is trackability. I'm going to ask you if you only had one KPI or one measurement to have or one trackable thing in all of your business, what would it be? What would you choose to track forever and ever if you can only pick one? I would love to track how much waste we have. Interesting. It's it's very hard to put a number on it. Yeah. We we make we we've got some forms whenever it comes. Okay, so just so you understand what I'm saying, our trucks haul 10 yards, cubic yards of concrete. They can haul as little as, you know, quarter yard all the way up to 10 yards. 10, yeah. And so say a contractor calls and says, Hey, I'm pouring a house slab. I think it's gonna take a hundred yards. So that's 10 trucks. So we send 10 trucks there. They pour out of them. They get to the 10th truck and they only need half of what's in there. Right. So there's five yards coming back. So we pour them into, into forms, block forms yeah. is what they are. And people use them for retaining walls or, you know, material bins, different places and things like that is what we do with our waste. So it's a small way to be able to track it, but there's so much that you know, you pour out on the job site, you know, how much you got left? Oh, about a yard on my truck. Yeah. Just dump it over there. Right. You know, or guys come back to the yard. I got about a half yard. Well, it's not going to make a block. Well, dump it in our pit, in our washout pit. Yep. So, I mean, there's thousands of yards that are wasted and I wish there was a, there was a way to track that. Um, just and be really see what it was. Yes. And some companies, they, 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 they recycle. They've got a recycle plant. Wow. I've seen those and I've I had experience and I'm just not a fan of them. I just don't feel like they're a good fit for us. Sure. So, but yeah. I would Another love, solution coming uh, on the horizon. I can feel it. I would love to see how much really, I mean, that, I think about it all the time, man, we, we waste a lot. It's paid for. Sure. It's like going to the restaurant and, yep. and saying, Hey, you know, give me the heat for two and eat one fajita out of that and, eat, and then leave with the rest of it sitting on the plate. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't feel like you're a very good steward of, of what you've been given. Yeah. I can, I can, especially in our edible arrangements franchises, we, we try to minimize waste all the time. At the end of the day, there's pounds and pounds of strawberries thrown away just the way that it is. Okay. What book would you recommend, Jeremy? Have you heard of Extreme Ownership? I have. It's a phenomenal book. Oh, Yeah. Yeah. What's, what's your, I mean, obviously uh, outside of extreme ownership, <laughs> what's your one takeaway from that book? Like what, what did you get? What, what can you pass along to the listener right now? Think outside the box. Think outside the box. There's always a solution. And even though you think you might have the right one, listen to other people and, and work on those things. You know, I'm a big believer just because I think my way's the right one. It always isn't. Most yeah. of the time it's not. And so, you know, I list and, and I weigh options and things like that and try to think outside the box. And that's another reason why we've been able to grow as fast as we can and be successful because in, in, in our market right now, we're going through a major cement shortage. And so we're always having to think outside the box. All right, where can we get cement, you know, to handle this week and how much right. cut out of our mixes or, or you know what, we're not going to pour this mix, you know, no commercial. We're only going to do residential for this week and things like that versus sure. just going with it until you run out. So I like to think outside the box and, and feel like extreme ownership talks a lot about, you know, about being able to find alternative ways versus just running through the door and pulling yep. the trigger. Exactly. I love that perspective. What do you think about intentionally networking or masterminding with other entrepreneurs? I love it. Okay, and why? People don't get wealthy by themselves. I've never met a wealthy person that did it all by himself. Never. Yeah, they might have done some things, but at the end of the day, they've always had a mentor, a business partner, a leg up, you know, some way or another, other businesses, other people, you know, to get to where they're at. We got to have each other. There's a couple of other companies that you're ready mix companies in our area that we're allies with. 
we're good friends. You know, we help each other out. We talk all the time. How can I help you? How can you help me? Our client goes down, hey, I'm going to send my trucks over and get them loaded at your place. Yep. And they're small, independent owners like we are. You know, the bigger boys, you know, commercial or corporate guys, you know, hey, my plants broke down. Can I come load a few trucks there? No, absolutely not. We're, we just, we're fresh out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so, but yeah, I mean, it takes, you know, like that old people say about raising kids, it takes a village. Well, it, it takes a village to make a lot, to make money. Yeah. Healthy. You can't do it alone. I don't care who right. you are. Yeah. I think, I think the way that you said that, obviously, I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan of surrounding myself with, with high quality individuals, but what you just said, as far as like, you can't, you cannot build wealth without it. Just plain and simple. You, you have no hope <laughs> if you don't. So pretty, pretty matter of fact, and I think it's true. Last question here for you, Jeremy. If you could whisper in the younger Jeremy's ear, what would you tell him? Shut your mouth. <laughs> that same mouth has probably sold you millions and millions and millions and millions. And millions. It has, it has. But there's, there's times, you know, when I was younger, I felt like I'd be a, a, a lot further along in life if I would have just shut up and listened yeah. as a younger man. Sure. It took me many years to, to realize that. Just shut up and listen. You know, take it in. What's I am. Yeah. You know, yeah, we've got two ears, one mouth, right? Well, Jeremy, you've been, you've, you've been patient and amazing here with me today, giving plenty of value to not only the listeners, but me as well. How can the listener find you? They want to connect with you. They want to maybe get to know you a little bit better. Maybe they just want to pick your brain. Maybe they want to order, uh, order concrete from you if they're in the, in the Dallas area. Yeah, we have a, a website, titanmud.com, T-I-T-A-N-M-U-D with one D, mud.com. We're called Titan Ready Mix. So we plant in Crescent, Texas, and our second location, the plant is actually being shipped as we speak. Nice. We'll, we'll be starting the erection on that this week, which I'm wow. excited about. Yeah. In, in Springtown. Spring. So yeah, or Jeremy at TitanMud.com. There you go. We'll put all that in the show notes as well. People can easily reach out and find you. And and there's a lot of people in that Metroplex between those two cities. And so there's a lot of people around you and I'm sure people listening and I'm sure that there'll, there'll be some people that reach out and connect. You've been incredible. Your insight, your sales history, your mouth is, has, a, has an extreme history. And so I just appreciate you sharing it with us here today. Uh, blessings on you, your family, your business partner, your businesses, your people, your guy, the yeah. whole deal. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. It's been fun. Thank you for listening to Gathering the Kings today. I hope that you were able to pull out a few nuggets to go apply into your business right away. More importantly, though, I hope that you're realizing that it takes more to be successful than just being by yourself, doing it all on your own, carrying the weight all by yourself. What I have realized, not only in my own journey from multiple businesses and multiple different industries and now interviewing over two or 300 other very successful seven, eight and nine figure business owners is that it's tough to do it alone. And so Gathering the Kings exists to bring together successful entrepreneurs. In fact, we are putting together 1,000 kings, specifically who are grateful, but not done. We're intentionally assembling kings who fight tooth and nail for their business, family, and communities. And here's what we believe, that in the pursuit of excellence in those areas, that it ignites within us the responsibility to govern power and forge a lasting legacy. So if that relates and, and resonates with you, and you know that you need people around you, sharp, qualified, other very successful business owners, I want you to go to gatheringthekings.com. I want you to take a look at what we're doing and see if it makes sense for you to be part of our pursuit to 1,000 Kings. Talk soon.